Hello everybody, my name is Jason and I am going to change my guitar strings. There seemed to be some interest in this when I did it by accident in a story time not too long ago. So since I have to do it anyway, I thought I would make a video not just of changing the guitar strings, but also I wanted to show you the different tools that I use to change the guitar strings and also the parts of a guitar. So I'm going to do that right now. First, you will see the different tools that I will be using to change my strings. And then you will see the different parts of the guitar. And then we'll come back here and I will show you how I change my strings. Here is a close up of the different tools and supplies. First, there is the strings. And here, there are six strings on a guitar. And the numbers, the 12, 16, 24, 32, 42, and 53, all represent the thicknesses. And here's one of the strings. You can see, and there's that little piece on the end. Is it going to focus on it? Come on, is it going to? Not so much. But the little, the little ball there, you can see. That's the thing that goes, that holds the string in place. You'll see when, when I do it. And then we have, this is called a string winder. And there's this slot in there. And then this little notch right there are two pieces that you'll need to remember. And I don't need both of these, but I want to show you because the important part, because you want to trim your strings when you're done, is this is a wire cutter is to have a little something that's sharp here. And of course, if you are small, make sure you always, always ask before using any tools. If you are a child, always ask before using any tools. Because if you pinch yourself with this, it will hurt a lot. So this is a wire cutter and you can see there's a sharp part there. And these are needle nose pliers. And you can see in the middle there, this part here, that's the part and you want to just trim the string. And so that's pretty much all the pieces. Now I'm going to show you a few of the parts of the guitar. These here are the tuning pegs right there. It's how you tune the guitar. If you saw the other video where I tune the guitar. And this right here is called the nut. You can see where the slots where the strings go through, they hold the strings in place. There's a pick, if you've ever seen me use a pick. Not everybody uses a pick when they play. And the metal piece right here, all these metal pieces, all along here like that, those are all called frets. And that's how you make the different notes on the guitar. The whole thing all the way down, this is called the neck. The neck is the whole piece all the way around. The fretboard, you see how there's a line there, how it's divided. The fretboard is the thing that's on top, but the neck is the whole thing. And then we come down here and that's the sound hole where the sound comes out. This is called a pick guard and it's supposed to protect the wood of the guitar. But as you can see, because of how I play my guitar, it's not completely working. It's got a little, it's a little worn down there. This bottom part here, this piece right here, the plastic piece is called the bridge. And these little buttons here are called bridge pins. And this whole thing here is called the body. All this is the body of the guitar. So that's most of the parts. Not every single one of them, but the main ones. Welcome back. Did you learn anything? <laughs> I did. I actually had to look up a couple of those things for the video because I didn't know what the names of everything were. So there's really nothing fancy about it. I've got my string winder here and I just want to loosen the string like that. And just keep going. 
I won't necessarily have a whole lot to say. You're welcome to watch this all the way to the end, but you might get the idea after a couple of strings. I'd be curious. Curious to hear maybe in the comments from anybody who watched it all the way through. So I told you about the, the slot, and that's what I use to put slide over top of the, the tuning peg like this. And then this little notch right here is what I use to pop out the bridge pin. So that comes out and it looks like that. Should I show you close up? Let me set this down. So I don't know if you can see it, if it's a good angle. There's the bridge pin, see how long it is. And also, I don't know if you can see, but there's like a slot in it and that's where the string goes. So I usually change the strings one at a time so that I don't mess up the, because when you have the strings pulled this tight, it creates like a tension or pressure. And I don't want to really want to mess up the pressure too much. I don't really know scientifically about it, but it's, it's just, it's easier to, to do them one at a time, less of a mess. So here is the E string, the low string, the new one. Oh, you know what? I forgot my tuner. <laughs> well, we'll just put it on here like this. So I stick it, the, the little round part that I showed you earlier, push it down like that. And I push that pin in, but I'm going to have to push it in, in again later because it'll pop out of place when I tighten the string. And there's a little hole in there and I stick the end of it through the hole. And then I just wind the string. And I, I try to get this part that's sticking out to go underneath the rest of the string. So you'll see here it can go over or underneath. I usually try to get it underneath. I feel like it just kind of keeps it in place better, but again, you know, it's probably more than one way to do this sort of thing. Once you get it wrapped around like that, you can get the string winder on there and you can go a little bit faster. And so, you hear that? Kind of cool. So that's pretty close. So there's the E string. Notice the, uh, look how different the color is. Can you tell? If I hold it to the light, maybe. How that's kind of like a gold, and this is more of a bronze color. I don't know if it's because the strings are different, or if it's because these are just yellow from age. So, there are a lot of things that I don't know. <laughs> Many things. Lots of things about guitars that I don't know. So hopefully, I won't be giving you any wrong information. If I do, you can tell me, either when you see me in person or in the comments. So, there's the E string, and then here's A. We loosen that. That one's got a lot of, a lot of layers. I think, uh, again, I don't know what the correct, the correct way is. Some people like to, like to pull the string. I'll show you. I'll show you in just a second. So. Here's the next one, the A string. So I put it through the hole. And see, I, I pull it quite a bit through here like this. I think some people probably like to have more 
times that it's wrapped around. I don't know if one way is better than another, honestly. So here I go. I'm going to try to get this part to go underneath when I twist it around, just because I feel like it holds it in place a little bit better. Ooh, hear that? You're going to hear lots of noises like that as you tighten, because the, the string has to stretch out. So you can use a tuner. You saw me in the other video use a tuner. I'll probably put a link to it at the end of this video. But you can also tune a guitar using the other strings in the guitar. I don't think it's as precise. But for example, I'll show you like... I don't know if this is perfectly in tune, but if I go up five frets, one, two, three, four, five. And you remember the fret is the metal piece that goes through there. So one, two, three, four, five. If I hold it down, this note here, those notes are the same. And here, hear that? Fifth fret. Sorry. This one you have to go up one. So that's another way you can tune a guitar. But if one of your notes is off, then they're all going to be off. So now we've got the E and the A string, and now it's time for the D string. You don't have to use one of these. You can do it by hand, but this makes it a little faster, I think. The really nice ones, this one's plastic. It's supposed to turn like this, so you can stick it on there, and then you, as you turn the thing, this thing turns but all the ones that I have are plastic and they always get stuck. Well, string come on get in there <coughs> Yee. yikes get in there so I usually do it by hand just till I get it underneath and then I get the the string winder. listen to this ready yeah every time it always freaks me out when it does that but it's just stretching that's all <laughs> okay yeah, that's out of tune already you got to keep tuning it like a few times before they stretch out sufficiently sufficiently uh, that means enough <laughs> sound that it makes when you unwind it. It's like, beep, beep. 
and then it goes, you know, exactly like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, see, I think the last time these strings were changed, I had some repairs done on my guitar, and the guitar shop changed the strings, and I guess they do a lot more winds, they wind it around a lot more. Maybe that means I'm doing it wrong, I don't know. We will pick these up later. All right, so the G string. The strings flop around quite a bit in the beginning before they get tight. down two to go now it's time for the B string which is my nemesis in addition to I've said before that I have the hardest time keeping this string in tune in addition to that this is almost always the one that breaks on me so I've used the word nemesis you know what the word nemesis means anybody so like if you like superheroes spider-man or Wonder Woman, people talk about them having a nemesis, and basically that's kind of like your main, your main enemy, like the, the enemy that, oh, am I tightening this or loosening this? No, no, hang on a second, I'm a little distracted here. Oh, ah, that's why. So your nemesis is like your main enemy. Hopefully you don't have any enemies. When I, when I say I kind of am using it like a joke, But that just means that the like in spider-man's case uh, who would you say probably maybe the green goblin or dr octopus can you have more than one nemesis probably they just keep coming back again and again and again to drive you crazy sound. Can you hear that? Sounds a little bit like a bell. Like a faraway bell. Oh, I don't know if you can hear that. <laughs> All right, stop getting distracted, Jason. tight. I'm just going to go back through and push on these other ones to make sure they're in there. <laughs> Every 
every time. can't tell, I don't really love changing the strings of my guitar. <laughs> I've been putting this off for way too long. And then, now to the E string, the last one. Some people actually, really good guitar players, sometimes will will play and change the notes in the middle of playing. I cannot do that. Yeah, by the way, I know I mentioned about not using tools without a grown-up around. If you have a guitar at home, don't try to do this without a grown-up also. And finally, the E string. Oh, oh is that bad? It just got kinked a little bit when I was unwinding it. Hmm. Well, you know what? To be on the safe side... Uh, I have, I'm going to um, set this over here. I actually have another set of strings that is like a spare set. I usually don't do that, but when my string broke in story time, I, uh, waited a long time before changing it again before changing the rest of them so the the one string that I that was new was on there a long time probably didn't need to know all that all right let's just be really careful and not bend it there we go All right, one more. Whew. Anybody still left watching? It's always hard not to hurry when you're almost done with a task that you don't really like doing. But it is very important to not hurry because sometimes if you hurry at the end of a task and then something goes wrong, you might have to do it all over again.
or at least some part of it all over again. never had a string break, a new string break on me while changing my strings, but I guess when it does that like, snap like that, snap like that, you always, you know, I always figure, you know, it's the first time for everything, right? <laughs> so let's straighten some of these pieces out here so we can snip them. Pull that away there, and pull that over there. Pull that over there. And that. I just I like want to hurry really badly because I just want this to be done. <laughs> but I hope I hope you you find it interesting. I mean I don't I don't even know if anybody's still watching. <laughs> it takes a while to do it. So we got them all out like that. Now I'm going to grab my tuner. So hold on one second. All right, let's tune this baby. So now you get to see it all happening at once, the tuning and the changing of the string. Now I will have to tune this again because even when you tune it, the strings still stretch out. Stretch out. It takes maybe a good day or so before. It's also really cold in the basement. I should probably not keep this in the basement. you've probably all been waiting for. When's he gonna use the tool with the sharp edges? So here and what all I do basically is I'm just cutting the ends off. So it's not a whole lot. I try not to do them right right next to the thing next to the I don't know what this part's called. This is the tuning peg. I guess the whole thing is the peg. Probably should have looked that up too but I try not to get right next to it but so you step that and you want to make sure these are little pieces so you want to make sure you're you don't lose them because they're sharp on the ends and that snip i don't even know if it's still rolling right now and snip and I'll turn that around and snip Oof. Snip. And there we go. Let's give it another little test here. I'm 
there you have it. That's how you change the strings on the guitar. So thanks for joining me if anyone is still left and make sure you like and subscribe to our videos and check back regularly for more new and exciting content. Have a great day. Bye.